Thank you for watching Fox Now. Now on Fox 9, the primary election just two months away and two candidates hoping to represent Yuma in town today will lay out their top priorities. Airbags can be life-saving in the event of an accident, but as many as 10,000 Yuma vehicles may not have ones that would properly deploy if you were in a crash. How to make sure yours are in working order, plus denying workers wages, the allegations being made toward a local McDonald's tonight on Fox 9. You're watching Nightside on Fox 9, your only news at 9 p.m. Welcome to Fox 9 on this Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. I'm Adam Clapp. A lot of election news to get to tonight, starting with GOP Senate candidate Blake Masters, who paid a visit to Yuma ahead of the Arizona primary. Our own Jacqueline Aguilar spoke with him earlier today. GOP Senate candidate Blake Masters paid a visit to Yuma ahead of the Arizona primary election. Masters toured the Yuma Community Food Bank and hosted a meet and greet at the Civic Center. Masters is a Tucson, Arizona native and says he has seen the border crisis issue firsthand. We've got tens of thousands of illegal crossings every month. And it wasn't perfect a few years ago, but man, it was pretty darn good relative to what it is now, right? So Joe Biden's open borders are failing. Uh, you guys are paying the price for it here. We're paying for the price for it in Yuma County. During his visit, he took a tour of the Yuma Community Food Bank to hear how they've been dealing with food insecurity amid rising inflation. So many seniors who are on fixed incomes, right? Social Security. Well, that doesn't get properly indexed for inflation. And because of Biden's economic policies, this inflation is just going crazy. People are finding it harder and harder to, to, to eat. Just a week after the tragic shooting in Uvalde, Texas, Master says he is in favor of more training for school resource officers, which he believes would help prevent another shooting. I'm a Second Amendment supporter. I believe in people's right to own guns, to defend themselves, to defend schools, at least as well as we defend banks, and jewelry stores, and sporting events. Uh, but I, I truly pray for the families in that community. The latest polls from 538 show Blake Masters at 32% with U.S. Senator Mark Kelly at 49%. As we wait to see what voters will decide on August 2nd, Masters is expecting a major endorsement from former President Donald Trump. Reporting in studio, Jacqueline Aguilar, News 11. Jackie, thanks. Now to the governor's race. Karen Taylor Robeson, also in Yuma today. As the race for governor heats up, Samantha Bird now joins us in studio with her exclusive interview. With just over 60 days until the Arizona primary election, Karen Taylor Robeson says she is traveling throughout the state to meet as many voters as possible, with today's stop being Yuma County. During her visit, Taylor Robeson toured the southern border, witnessing the gaps in the wall as well as the migrant crossings we see in Yuma on a daily basis. She says she has a border plan in place if elected governor, saying the Biden-Harris administration is not stepping up to the plate. What I did see today was, was the, the evidence of a failed uh, border policy by this administration. The, the Biden-Harris Biden administration has failed us. Taylor Robeson says she also spoke to local business leaders at the Yuma Chamber of Commerce about issues they're facing, as well as education, which she says is her passion. My passion, uh, my, and my passion as governor, will be education. I have a long, long history in education, both in the K-12 space, uh, as well as higher education. And with just two months until the Arizona primary election, according to OH Predictive Insights on the Republican side, Taylor Robeson is currently in second place with 22% support, with Carrie Lake in first at 29%. In a distant third sits Matt Salmon with 11% support. Our campaign is firing on all cylinders. You know, it's been, been about eight weeks since uh, all the opponents started attacking me. And I was quickly reminded by people, if you're not uh, carrying the football, they're not trying to tackle you. The Arizona primary election will take place on August 2nd. Keep tuning in as election season heats up. Reporting in studio, Samantha Bird, Fox 9. We're heading west down to Imperial County, where the primary is right around the corner. And the Registrar of Voters letting residents know what they can expect next week. While Jahari continues our team election coverage. Less than a week to go until Election Day, with about 87,000 registered voters across the county. Everything has been smooth sailing for the most part, but the Imperial County Registrar says some residents in Brawley received the wrong ballot. 
the county is pushing residents to go out and vote. All of the ballots have been mailed to each registered voter. Um, they went out and were in mailboxes around the first part of May. So every registered voter by now should have had their ballot received in their home. Lindsay Dale says residents can vote by mail or drop it off at one of the 57 drop-off locations throughout the city. While things have been running smoothly, one Brawley candidate for the Imperial Irrigation District says some ballots were mailed incorrectly. This is the second time that it happens. It happened in 2020, and it's a very specific area, and it's an area that specifically hurts my campaign. That is the area that I grew up in. Um, and it's just overall, it's concerning to think uh, that this might be happening in other areas. But the county says the issue has been fixed. We were able to catch all of those voters. We have notified them, and new ballots have been sent out to them. We, we feel very confident that those voters have been given all of the right tools and information. As for Castro, he can only rely on preparation to get him past the first round. We'll be reaching out to supporters. Uh, we'll continue to phone back and knock on doors. It's going to be a very close race, and so we believe that um, uh, we will be one of the top two to come out of this election. The county says if you want to vote by mail, you can turn your ballots in at any polling place. The polls open next Tuesday at 7 in the morning and close at 8 at night. Reporting in Imperial County, I'm Wiley Jahari. All right, and staying in California, we're following a developing situation on Highway 86 near Cary Road, where one person unfortunately is dead after a head-on collision with a tractor. California Highway Patrol says although the investigation is still very much ongoing, this car caught fire and the driver did not survive. We're told the operator of the tractor is okay and it's unclear how the crash happened or if there was more than one person in the car. CHP is reminding those to be behind the wheel to slow down and don't drive distracted. We'll continue to have updates on KYMA.com. Now to more updates on the allegations of child abuse at a local Marine Corps base. Two former Child Development Center employees at MCAS Yuma allegedly abused up to as many as 13 children. 28-year-olds Valerie McKinstry and Catherine Combs charged with a combined 20 counts of abuse. McKinstry appeared in court this morning and is set to return later this summer. The state prosecutor explained to the court there's still a lot of surveillance video to go through from inside the Child Development Center. The second suspect, McCombs, will be in court tomorrow. Agents with the Yuma sector arrested a convicted murderer after he tried to cross into the country illegally. 50-year-old Amikar Jesus Espinoza, recently apprehended near County 8 and a Half Street and Levy Road, he was convicted for a 2004 murder out of Texas and sentenced to 10 years. Espinoza was removed from the country after serving seven years of that sentence. U.S. Border Patrol says he will be prosecuted for re-entering the country and will face more time behind bars. Nearly $129,000 in back wages were covered after a federal investigation found several McDonald's locations in Yuma denied workers wages. The U.S. Department of Labor says the owner of those locations, Jose Leon, was not paying 332 of his employees for overtime or hours worked. In addition to the back wages, Leon was required to pay a little more than $20,000 in penalties for violating labor laws. Did not pay proper overtime or hours for 332 workers in Yuma, Arizona, who are current and former employees, so some are not working there anymore. The division also found Leon violated federal minimum wage requirements when he failed to pay some employees for all the hours they work. He was fined more than $20,000 in penalties. Well, right now you could be driving a car with a bad airbag, and if it's not fixed soon, it could put you in danger on the roadway. The organization Check to Protect says there's been a recall of Takata brand airbags. Over 190,000 vehicles throughout Arizona have bad airbags, including up to 10,000 in Yuma. June 1st marks the start of Airbag Recall Repair Month. It's a statewide initiative to make sure drivers are aware of this issue and get it taken care of. If you don't replace uh, uh, airbags that are defective, instead of saving lives, it could be the other way around. You know, something defective in case of an accident, uh, it could go the other way around. So if you want to find out if your car has a bad airbag, you can head to the website Check to Protect. Dot org. You can type in your car's VIN number and get all the info you need. 
of Alex First Weather. Rob, welcome back. Great to have you back in our shows. I'm sure the viewers are happy after having to watch me do the weather the last couple of days, but it's getting hotter out there, right? It certainly is. You know, you, you did weather on some good days, considering the <laughs> fact we were in the 90s on Memorial Day, even the day after, and now today we've elevated that to another level. Let's take a look at your RV World Yuma Skycam, giving you a glimpse of the bright lights of the city of Yuma. And here's what we're looking forward to in the very near future for your headlines. A near normal night tonight. The heat's going to continue to rise. But will there be a significant bend on their way or at least a twist in the weather, as I'd like to say, in regards to a temperature adjustment? One can only hope, but uh, you'll have to kind of check out the extended forecast for that one. We'll tell you more about it coming up. All right, Rob, see you in just a little bit. Next on Fox 9, though, the historic drought in the desert southwest still a factor. And now residents in Southern California are being hit with water restrictions. While the government says climate change is to blame. Next on Fox 9. Welcome back to Fox 9. Rob Fram taking an extended Memorial Day weekend. So I'm here to give you your full weather forecast. Taking a look at the lights of the city of Yuma and our RV world of Yuma Sky Cam and getting on to our satellite radar. A whole a lot of nothing here in the desert southwest per usual. And we're going to take a look at those temperatures right now. Mid 80s for the most part. A little bit of elevated 80s as you move on into Yuma County. Just feels like a day ago where these were our daytime highs. But summer fast approaching, folks. And these might be the last of the triple digits. More on that in just a little bit. As for the rest of our evening, going into the mid 60s in Imperial County, some mid to low 70s in some areas and in Yuma County we're going to see some of those 60s again so a nice mild evening for the most part in the desert southwest and moving on into tomorrow here come the triple digits across the board in Imperial County hundreds hundreds and fives hundred and twos in Yuma County quartzite up to the north just holding on at 99 but for the most part we're all in the triple digits, and it's going to be like that for the foreseeable future. For our air quality index presented by the Imperial County Air Pollution Control District, we're mostly good, a couple of moderates uh, in the area. But as we move on into our polar cooling extended forecast, this is what I was talking about. Hundreds for at least the next week, maybe a little bit of a cool down if you want to look that far ahead into next Wednesday. But 103, 105, 104, it's starting to feel like summer in the Imperial Valley, even a little more elevated, expecting a daytime high of 106 on Thursday, maybe in a little wind into this weekend, but the mercury is definitely heating up in the desert southwest. But coming up next, sharing is caring. How little free libraries 